Today we are looking at an NES cartridge, but a special NES cartridge. This is a cartridge made by Comerica. This happens to be uh, The Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy, um, a game that we covered uh, just a couple days ago on Noah's Game Room. Uh, but today we're going to talk about the cartridge itself. For one thing, the label appears to be on upside down because this is how you typically hold an NES cartridge. If I pick up another or more traditional NES cartridge like Kirby's Adventure here, uh, you can see that the label is not right. Um, yeah, some other weird stuff about this. If you turn it around to the back, you can see again, this label's on upside down. And there's also this switch back here, which is kind of odd. Now, this fits just fine into a regular NES, but once it's in there, my God, is it a pain in the ass to get out of there. Um, the reason for that is the handle on it. I don't know what it is, but the handle on this just isn't as good as say, a regular NES game like this comes out fairly easily. Whereas this guy goes in and I really have to get my fingers in there to grab it. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. So you probably already figured out that the reason this looks different is because it's an unlicensed NES game, meaning that it was not officially approved by Nintendo, even though it does function perfectly on an NES system. Back when Nintendo was first starting to come onto the market with their Nintendo Entertainment System, they wanted to basically control all quality on their system because they didn't want to create another uh, crash like we had with Atari back in the early 80s. There was a limited number of NES games that could come out each year and each game had to be approved by Nintendo. And the way Nintendo got around this was they made themselves a special lockout chip that prevented unlicensed games from playing in their hardware. Unlike the Atari, where pretty much anybody that could make the Atari cartridges could make a game and put it on the system. Now, the way that Nintendo was able to prevent people from putting their own games on their system was they had a special lockout chip. And actually, inside of a, an officially licensed NES game, there's a little chip that communicates with another little chip that's inside of the NES. So when you first power on the system, that chip sends a signal to the one inside of the NES and basically says, okay, this is a real game. Now we can play it. And then it boots up the game and then you can play. And that was one of the biggest things. Nintendo were the ones manufacturing this chip. They were the only ones you could get this chip from. So if you wanted to put a game on their system, it had to be officially approved by Nintendo. And during that approval process, you would actually get access to these special chips so you could manufacture these cartridges. And this worked pretty well overall. However, there were a few companies that had a problem with Nintendo's ultimate iron fist ruling of their system. Tengen, who are best known for their black NES cartridges, uh, actually reverse engineered the official NES lockout chip and made their own, which allowed their games to be played on an NES system without actually having to get the licensing chip from, or the licensed chip from Nintendo. And Nintendo sued their ass for it, but that's a tale for another day. However, other companies like Comerica here and Color Dreams had a different workaround. They made their own chip as well, but it, rather than reverse engineering the official NES chip, they made their own chip that when the system powered on, it actually sends packets of essentially glitchy data to the lockout chip inside of the NES, which basically froze the chip and caused you to be able to play games on the system even if they were unlicensed. It's kind of ingenious, actually. Now, a lot of people will think that the Comerica games uh, that have the switch on the back, that this actually has something to do with the actual lockout process. And in fact, on the back, it says, position B, only use this position if the game does not work in position A, and position A just says position A. Um, and this is actually false information. This switch on the back here has absolutely nothing to do with the, the lockout thing. That's all done automatically by the, the glitchy chip inside. This switch is actually for position A is so you can play it in a North American NES and position B is so you can play it in a European NES. That's really all it does. Let's go ahead and take a look inside these guys here. The Comerica cart just uses regular old Phillips screws. All right, and if we take the backs off of each of these and set them aside, see that on the back they look fairly similar. Um, I'll set each of those aside too so we can just look at the cartridges themselves. Of course, everything we want to look at is on this side. So this obviously is Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy, and this is Kirby's Adventure. Um, there's some similar chips. Things are a little different though. 
Obviously, Kirby has battery backup save. Uh, I'm not sure what this chip is. That's probably a proprietary thing they made for Kirby's Adventure. So this is a PRG chip, and it's a CR CHR chip. This is basically a ROM chip that holds the programming, the coding of the NES, and this one holds like the sp sprite sheets or patterns, I guess is what they actually called them on the NES. Um, that's a extremely simplified version of what's actually going on here. I'm by no means an expert on NES hardware, but uh, that's kind of what I know. So this little guy right here is that lockout chip that I was talking about. Uh, it's called the CIC, and no, I don't remember what it's called, or what it stands for, but this is a chip that communicates with the corresponding chip inside the NES. Um, and this chip right here, getting it into focus, is the Comerica, I guess, glitch chip, the one that sends glitchy packets of data to the chip inside of the NES, causing them to freeze, basically bypassing it all together. It has a wire just soldered to two different pins, and it has a lot more capacitors and resistors than this does. Basically, this looks like a hack job, is what I'm getting at, whereas this looks like an NES game actually should look. So I think this is a cool little oddity from a, a bygone era. Uh, this is something that became less and less prominent as cartridge games developed and then obviously became completely obliterated by the time that uh, the disc formats came out. And then those had their own region lockout chips that function via software and they were a lot harder to get around than these work around cartridge methods. Overall, you can kind of feel how the cartridge is made from cheaper plastic and these were specifically painted. Like this cartridge has seen some wear because this must be, <laughs> the paint is rubbing off right here and you can almost see into the cartridge if you hold it just in the right light. It's, it's kind of weird.